We actually came up with this recipe and method basically of cooking pork butts when I was doing a lot of charity work. I love giving back to my communities, but sometimes we just need to get 200 pounds of pork done. And so choosing those smaller pork butts, putting them in the pan makes it easy. We still get all that wood fired flavor and a lot less cleanup and mess. All right, so we're gonna make the easiest ever pulled pork. So there's a couple of tools here. We've got apple juice, Traeger pork and poultry rub. We've got a pork butt that's about eight pounds. And the key to this all, this is a disposable aluminum pan. One of the most important things about doing the easiest ever pulled pork, and my method just works like brilliantly easy, is that this pork butt, as you can see, we've got it all wiped off, okay? There we go. Has to go and fit into the pan but it can't touch the sides. And the reason is, is that we wanna make sure that that delicious wood fired, you know, goodness and smoke gets all the way to the bottom. So you don't want it touching the sides and then you wanna get it all seasoned up. So that eight pound range usually works for this. All right, so next step to this, really simple, generously spritz it with apple juice or peach nectar or bourbon or beer, whatever liquid you like, all of those will work. Um, I just prefer fruit juices because it really does help build up that delicious bark on the outside. So generously spritzed everywhere. And then go to town with seasoning. At least three quarters of a cup to a cup of barbecue rub. Remember, this is eight pounds of meat and we want to make sure that it has great flavor. So be super generous. Just like that. Now, get to rubbing your butt. You want to make sure all of the sides are covered from the bottom to the top and do it in the pan to make your life easier because anything that's left over in the pan is just going to give you more flavor later on. Rub that butt. Easiest ever pulled pork. Simple. No trimming, no nothing. A pan, lots of room around the sides, apple juice, Traeger pork and poultry, and then right before you go to the grill, spritz it again. Because smoke is water soluble, we want to create delicious bark. Let's go to the grill. So for me at home, a lot of times I'll actually custom blend my own stuff. I'll take half cherry, half hickory. Sometimes I'll take half mesquite, half cherry. You know, for my big cooks, a lot of times though, it's a base of hickory and a sweet fruit wood. I like that balance between the two fat cap on the bottom and the grill is set to 225 degrees. Pop it in there uncovered, close the lid, and don't come back until it gets to 170 to 180 degrees. Unless you want to spritz every 45 minutes to an hour with apple juice. Really simple. Good morning, everybody. We have had this gorgeous pork butt on the Trigger Grills overnight. This is the easiest ever recipe on how to make a, you know, literally delicious, succulent, moist, pulled pork done on the grill overnight. Easiest ever recipe. Take a look at all of that mahogany bark. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for the bark. It's pristine. Got coffee, I got a pork butt. Life is good, everybody. So when it comes to wrapping a pork butt, I always like to echo the same rub that I use on the outside on the interior package. So sprinkle on a little bit of Traeger pork and poultry for that added flavor boost. You know, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to heat. I'll fully admit that. So I use a very moderate amount of hot sauce in my wrap. But if you're at your house and you love hot sauce, load it up. Put a cup in there if you want. I love that little bit of heat, but I don't want it to overwhelm the flavor of the pork. One of my favorite kind of ingredients that I love using in pulled pork wraps is ghee. See ghee has all the milk solids already taken out of it. It's a little nuttier, but you can always swap in a margarine based product. You can always swap in regular butter, but I love the texture. It's almost sensual that it gives pork. That little bit of buttery goodness is great in the background. We want to enhance some of that sweetness. So whether it's light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, heck, you could even use molasses or corn syrup, but add a little note of sweetness in there and everything will come to the party. 
So when you do a wrap, you need to add a little bit of moisture in there. It'll actually help steam out the pork and actually break down the fibers of the meat. I love using apple juice, apple cider. Um, I've even used pineapple juice, peach nectar. You could even throw a soda in there if you wanted to. So up and until this point, we've been smoking the pork low and slow at 225 degrees. But once the pork is wrapped with foil, feel free to turn it up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you'll expedite the cooking process, get it done a little quicker. So how do you know when your pork is done? It's a really important question. So basically you want to use a digital thermometer and when you put it into the pork, it should have little to no resistance. Usually that's somewhere anywhere around 202 to 208 degrees. And then you've got to let it rest a minimum of one hour. All right, this is truly one of my favorite moments in all things cooked barbecue. It's that second that you can pull that bone out. Look at that, and my thumb's on that part, but look at how clean that bone is. It is smoking hot. This is a great indication that your pork butt has completed its entire cooking cycle because this tendon releases when everything's good to go. I love using my hands to sort pork. I use basic knit gloves with nitrile gloves over them. That gives me enough protection. As I'm going through the pork, I'm not just shredding it up and throwing it in a pan. I'm actually shredding it and removing any gristle and fat that may be in it. And that way you end up with a really, what I consider a clean pork. Don't waste a single drop of those pan drippings. Make sure once you've got all your pork shredded up, use all those pan juices and drizzle it all over those succulent moist pieces of pork. I love to talk about the versatility of pulled pork. Yes, we have this great classic sandwich with slaw and a, you know, just a traditional regular white bun. But pulled pork is awesome. You can make shepherd's pie, nachos, pizza, empanadas. You can go in a million directions with pulled pork. It is truly, once it's cooked, one of the most versatile barbecue leftovers ever.